<clears throat> Hello everyone. I don't really feel like coming on camera right now. I feel very... I'm very much in a withdrawn type of mood right now. I feel like I'm in a, co in a cocoon of transformation right now. Um, but I asked the Lord if he wanted me to come on here and just share the insight, the revelation <laughs> that he shared with me a couple nights ago. And he said yes. So I'm just going to open in prayer and then I'll share it. This shouldn't be too long. Father God, Yahweh, Holy Spirit, Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth, I just ask, Lord, for your words to come forth. I plead the blood of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth once again over my entire domain. And I just ask, Lord, that you would just be present. Yeshua, will you please fill me afresh, overflowing with your Holy Spirit, with your words. In the name of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth, I ask, will you please put a hawk hole over my tongue and prevent me from saying anything that's not true and not coming from you, God? I know pretty much the point that I want to make, but if there's other points that you want to add or whatever you you want to add, Lord, this is your channel, this is your ministry, um, I welcome and request um, any revelation that you want to bring as I'm speaking, let it be your words, Lord, and, and, and not my own, um, instead of my own. And I just, in the name of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth, I release the conviction and the revelation and the comprehension of the Holy Spirit of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth, to everyone and, and anyone out there listening. I ask, Lord, that you would have this video, this, this audio, this insight reach those who need it, that you would override any shadow banning and censorship, Lord, and just get this revelation out to those who need it. I ask for this in the name of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Whew. Okay, so um, I'm going to try to try to just get right to it because I know I don't like it when people go on and on um, without getting to the point. So... Um, I guess I'll give a little bit of like background context, but there's, there's a man and I met this man when I was 17 years old and, uh, I'm now 40. It's been about 23 years, give or take. And this man and I were never in an official, committed, intimate, romantic relationship. We spent time together quite a bit for a, for a chapter when I was 17, um, you know, but we were never an official couple and, um, and unfortunately this man never really opened up to me. Um, but over the years, this man and I seem to have reconnected. I believe it is now a total like, counting even the first time we entered each other's lives, all time is total. I think it's about 12 times that we have entered each other's lives. Or if you want to not count the first time, you could say that we have reconnected 11 times over the last 23 or so years. And... Truth be told, last year, 2021, um, we reconnected again, and there was even some discussion about me even going and living in his house and, um, you know, paying him a small amount of rent and, and whatever, and, um, and long story short, that didn't happen, and, um, but a couple nights ago, you know how the Lord works, that God will use anything. I was watching a movie, and the movie very much pulled on my heartstrings, and I began to lament. I might get a little emotional. Um, I began to lament how in my life there has not been some, you know, one great love, you know, um, the two men that I had the most significant 
relationship with, feelings for, you know, um, the Lord has revealed to me that one of them was fallen angel people, the other was Nephilim, um, which is why the relationships ultimately and always just never went anywhere and, but anyway, um, and caused me so much pain and depression and just sucked the life out of me, um, and I, I don't even remember how I recalled this man from, you know, uh, when I was 17, this man that I met when I was 17, but somehow he came into my thoughts and I began to ask the Lord about this man. And the Lord said, April, how many times, you know, like, do I have to show you the facts here? Like, <clears throat> look at how many times I brought you two back into communication. Has there been anyone else that you have reconnected with so many times? Because <clears throat> that was kind of, I think maybe that's how it, how this man from when I was 17, how he popped in my head because um, the movie that I had watched, there was a love story, of course, and, you know, but the two lovers found their way back to each other, and I was lamenting to the Lord. I said, Lord, why? Why, why don't I, why don't I have someone that I at least, you know, come back to from time to time or something, you know? That, that's like good, you know, that's like pure and, and healthy and ordained by you, you know, and, and that's when he began to speak to me about this man that I met when I was 17. And he said, look at all the times that you two have reconnected. There were so many times. There was one time I went, you know, back when I was still living in, in Jersey. That's where him and I both grew up and where we met. But there was one time I went to the boardwalk. I don't even remember why, but I, I walked through this restaurant on the boardwalk. And when I came out of the bathroom, the restroom, I be, if, if I'm recalling that memory correctly, I, I'm pretty sure he called my name. I didn't notice him. He noticed me. There he was, you know, just happenstance. We just bump into each other. There were so many times. Or like, you know, back in the days of like MySpace, you know, he signed on to MySpace and he found me and he contacted me. And um, there was just so many times. There, there was a time that we reconnected on LinkedIn and, and just, just, and then even last year, he said that he typed in, he was looking for a, a particular topic, and one of my videos popped up. It, there was just so many times that the Lord had our paths cross, so to speak. That, that God reopened doors to each other. <clears throat> and so as I continued to converse with the Lord about this man... I finally just asked him, I said, wait a minute, Lord, you're right. We did reconnect so many times. And and here's another interesting fact, okay? Um, at one point, this man and I were both in committed, official, serious relationships with other people. But yet we still um, reconnected d during that time frame. You know, and um, and it, it was funny because he ended up marrying that woman and I ended up marrying the guy that I was with at the time. But we still ended up reconnecting at least for a bit and had phone calls and whatever. And, and it wasn't like, it wasn't cheating. It wasn't like emotional cheating. Um, I truly believe that neither of us knew what the heck was going on. And... Um, but the people that we were, I mean, I can't speak for the, the, the woman he was with, but I know that the guys that I were with definitely saw him as, as a major threat. Um, and later on, um, the other person that I was with, when I simply just reconnected with this man on LinkedIn, um, the guy that I was with felt very threatened by him. And, and I never reconnect with my exes. Now, granted, this man was not an official ex because we had never actually been together as a couple. Um, but how I've always operated was, okay, when it's done, it's done. I, I don't talk to you anymore. Like, that's it. 
And for some reason, this man and I just kept reconnecting. And it was like, it was no big deal. Um, and often how we would leave things off is we would have some petty argument or something. He would get defensive. I would get defensive, whatever. Um, anyway, so two nights ago, I asked the Lord, I said, wait a minute, Lord, was he supposed to be like, was he your original ordained husband for me? Was he your original choice, your original Adam for me? And the Lord said, yes. In my mind, <laughs> my heart is still spinning, processing this. I met this man when I was 17 because that's, that's what I was lamenting to the Lord about, you know, because... You see these stories in movies, and yes, I know that the movies aren't necessarily what happens in real life, and blah, 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 but you've I've heard stories of people in real life as well, you know, but like, where like, you meet someone when, when you know, in your youth, you know, and like, and maybe the, maybe the timing was off or, or whatever, but like, you end up reconnecting with them and blah, 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 and I said, Lord, where is mine? Who? Who? Where? And he said, it's this guy that you've reconnected with at so many times over the years. I said, you got to be kidding me, Lord. It was right in front of my face the whole time. But see, the thing is, is when I first met this guy when I was 17, I tried, I tried to get to know him. And, um, he had walls up and, um, he had other reasons that I'm not going to get into. It's his personal business, but he had some stuff going on that he didn't want to disclose to me at the time and, you know, whatever. And, um, and then, you know, just, you know, life happens. Right. And, but like, even when I, like, a couple years later, when I went off into, like, army basic training, him and I would, like, write each other, because he was in the army, he was deployed over in Afghanistan, and we would write each other letters while I was in, um, well, leading up to basic, during basic, I think after basic, um, it, it's just, I'm, my mind, my heart is just blown away, and, uh, to think all the time that we wasted with other people. And um, like I said, I believe that God has revealed to me that most of the guys that I was with were just, you know, they weren't even his seed. They were Nephilim, fallen angel people, warlocks, you know, just... And... Uh, but what the Lord said to me was, he told me to just let this man go in my heart because he's never been ready for me. You know, um, he had his own stuff, his own junk, his own issues. Not that I didn't have mine, you know, I, I have, and I do, I had, and I, and I do. Um, but I've been definitely seek, seeking the Lord for my inner healing over the years, you know? Um, but, but what the Lord said to me I actually reached out to this man and him and I began emailing today and I was getting some closure from him. I am getting some closure from him. But um what the Lord just had me write in my last email to him was just as God presented Eve to Adam, God had been presenting me to this man over and over and over and over and over and over and over. <laughs> I'm sharing all this for the benefit of anyone out there. In case you have something like this that has happened in your life or is happening in your life, pay attention and ask the Lord. <laughs> because you could be missing out 
on God's will for you. Now, sure, you might say, well, April, why can't you two come together now? Well, the Lord told me no. And that God said it was too late. And I said, okay, Lord, why, why is that? And um, long story short, he told me that he has taken the swab, which the Lord has repeatedly confirmed to me is the mark of the you-know-what. And at this point, just because of how my life has transpired thus far, the Lord has appointed me to um, a very high, we'll just say very high things. And um, I think I've been realizing more and more how, what exactly, like, uh, like that dream I had back in 2020 of me like leading a protest in Washington, D.C., you know, this Things like that, you know, telling me that I have to go to Alaska. I just recently realized that he was telling me as early as 2015 or 16, 16, I think, that I'm called to go to South Africa. I believe the Lord told me that I'll be going to South Africa sometime after Alaska. Now, I'm going to keep praying about these things and confirming these things, but these things are quite scary to me. And so at this point, I have to continue on and whoever is going to be joining me as a husband is going to have to be equally yoked, which goes across the board, period, anyway. But I, I know this is going to, I know I'm going to get people criticizing and saying that I'm, you know, uh, full of myself or whatever, but... I know the high things that the Lord has been revealing that he's calling me to do and be and uh, my husband's going to have to be equally yoked. He's going to have to be on board um, for the things that I'm going to have to be doing. Um, and so anyway... It's just tragic to realize that God's original, his very first original ordained spouse for me, I met him when I was 17. That's why we kept reconnecting so many times. And he wants me to share this story, this insight, in case this has been happening in your life. If it has, you better get in your prayer closet and ask the Lord what the truth was and what the truth now is, because sometimes it is too late. You know, the mark of the you-know-what has been out a couple years now, and um, that makes all the difference, unfortunately. Uh, I mean, well, it is what it is. Um But if any of you have spent your life alone for the most part, like even when you've had a significant other, if you have still felt alone, you know that you weren't, you knew you weren't with the right person. You know what I mean? Like it may be because maybe you met the right person a while back, but <clears throat> because of their own brokenness, they rejected you or Whatever, you know, things just didn't work out, but it doesn't mean that God didn't have someone for you. It doesn't mean that you didn't meet the right person, but we all have free will. We can't control others. God's not going to force anyone, and unfortunately, our brokenness, our shatteredness uh, can get in the way, can cause us, can, um, you know, can misguide us in our decision making. I do believe that if this man had not rejected me back then, that he would have come to, to God sooner through me and that things would have worked out, you know. Um, I, I know I could have helped him regarding his junk, um, whereas I couldn't have helped these other people because they weren't even God's seed. Um, and I poured so much into them. Um, so anyway, I'm just sharing that. Lord, is there anything else you want me to say or share? <sighs> I 
I think that's it. <clears throat> Tragedies like this happen every day in many people's lives. And the Lord does send divine replacements. And even they can reject you, and I can attest to that. And you just have to keep your hand to the plow. Try not to look back in the sense of dwelling on the past. Yes, you need to do whatever you got to do to process your healing and all that, but you got to just keep pushing forward and serve the Lord. And what I've been realizing for myself personally is that my life has never been my own. My, nothing in my life has really worked out the way it was supposed to. I'm 40 years old, and the, the longest, most intimate, consistent relationship I've had outside of God himself would be my cat. I, I've had her 10 years. Her, her and I have been together 10 years. That's a quarter of my life. And here we are, the world's ending. So if that applies to you as a Christian, if that applies to you as an officer, if that applies to you as part of the two witnesses, if it resonates with you, then take it to the Lord and discuss it with Him. But the Lord will accomplish what He... If, if you're willing and you're submitting and surrendering and operating and living in, in meekness... You got to just continue forward and he will con he will accomplish what he what he wants to accomplish through you as, as long as you're fearing him being obedient to him um and I do believe that we are transitioning right now I I believe the body of Christ right now is very much transitioning I do believe that there's going to be divine replacements not just romantically um in all kinds of ways Ministry, leadership, etc. Anointings. I do believe that it's time to get down to business. I do believe that God is rolling up his sleeves and saying, okay. And he's going to start judging people, weighing them in his scales, judging them. And that there is about to be consequences and blessings. There's about to be demotions and promotions. And he's going to start bringing people together who fear him and live for him 100% as a living sacrifice. And in terms of kingdom marriages, he's going to bring two people together that both live their lives as a living sacrifice to him. Because that is how he is going to accomplish his purposes in the earth. I truly hope that this was edifying to at least one person out there. I bless you all in the mighty name of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth.